I'll see you guys in the dark. So this all takes place in August of last year, right before I moved to a different state for school. This story involves myself, 18 at the time, and my sister and cousin, both 14. And on the day in question, we decided to go and do what we call an Uzi adventure, where we basically get in the car and drive until we find something to do. This day, we decided to go to Target, but instead of the one we usually go to, we decided to go to a different one that was in the south end of the city that we lived near. A little background about the area that I live in. I grew up most of my life just outside of Detroit. Bigger area when I was in high school. The part of this area I lived in was more of the suburban slash downtown side, but on the south end. It was well known that all of the weird and dangerous people lived down there. Anyways, for some reason, I still don't know why we decided to go to the South Target instead of our usual one. We got there, and my sister and cousin got a couple of things for school while I just picked up a CD. We check out, and we go out to the car, and we see a green Chevy Trailblazer is now parked right next to my car. I didn't notice anything outside of the fact that the driver's seat was reclined all the way back. The window was slightly open, and it looked like someone was sleeping in the car. My sister gets into the passenger seat, and my cousin right behind her, and literally the second she got in the car, she said, drive, drive now. I didn't really think much, though, because she didn't sound panicked or anything. So I drive, and once we pull onto the main road, she told me that she saw an old man lying in the driver's seat, jerking off to people walking past. More specifically, children and their moms walking past. My cousin then said that she saw him, too and we were, of course, freaked out, and tried to decide what we should do. We ended up pulling over in a Staples parking lot, and sitting there trying to decide if the we should call the cops. My sister was crying at this point, and having an anxiety attack because she thought she'd get in trouble with her parents for calling the cops. Eventually, I convinced my cousin to call 911, and put in a report because my sister was still crying about not wanting to call the cops, and I suck at phone calls. Maybe half an hour or something after the incident, we get a call from the police pretty much telling us they found him in the car with his pants off and his tic-tac out, and that since he was a repeat offender and did this apparently extremely often, we needed to come to the station to file an official report. We tried to convince them to allow us to make it at the Target parking lot since they were still there, but they wouldn't allow it. At this point, our parents had no idea what was going on, and I'm not sure we wanted them specifically my aunt, to know because she is known to blow stuff extremely out of proportion and would probably never let my cousin out of the house ever again. But now that we're going to be at the station, we had no other choice but to tell them. So we tell our parents and my mom, dad, brother, aunt, uncle, and cousin to meet us all at the station. I remember that there was maybe one or two POs on duty that night and we had to wait a couple of hours while they called the detective at his house and ended up interviewing us in his pajamas in the fax room. Months later, I was at school in another state when we all got subpoenas to come to court. We ended up having to go to court two separate times, and I had to fly home for a month or two the second time because he appealed or something before eventually pleading guilty the second time around. And he's now out of parole after serving pretty much no time in jail. To end this story off, we don't go to that target anymore, and the last that I've heard about this was a call from the parole officer asking pretty much my viewpoint, and if I go to therapy because of it. I guess on a lighter note, though, because my family and I have warped sense of humor. We now refer to it as the pickle tickler incident. Anyways, to the 74-year-old man we found tickling your pickle in the car to little kids and caused us to spend hours at the police station, let's not meet ever again. Four years ago, I was waiting in a busy train station for my friend to arrive, as we were going to a movie together. I was standing by the clock where we agreed to meet when a police officer approached me, and this is how the dialogue went, more or less. What's a pretty woman doing all by herself here on this fine day? Oh, I'm just waiting for a friend. Oh, your boyfriend? No, 
just my friend. Oh, do you have a boyfriend? Do you want one? No, thank you. I'm not interested. Besides, I'm into my prom date. But we would be great together. That's not legal. I'm still in high school, and a minor. I don't believe you. Let's see your license. I don't think that's appropriate. What, you don't trust me? But I'm a cop. Uh, okay, here. So I hand him my ID. Oh, you live in such and such. I live there. Let me drive you home later. I'm sorry. I don't really feel comfortable with that. I don't know you. Give me your phone number. Why? I don't feel comfortable doing that. Unlock your phone and give it to me, or I'll arrest you for loitering. At that point, I genuinely freaked out and didn't know if he would actually do that, and my dumbass gave him my unlocked phone, and he called himself and saved my number. After that, he texted me repeatedly, to which I told him to leave me alone, and that it was highly inappropriate that he was flirting with a minor, and that if need be, I will use these texts as proof if he threatens to harass me, and then he responds, telling me that that's a bad move, and that he knows where I live, and then I blocked his number, and he left me alone. Fast forward to a few months from then, he somehow finds me on Facebook even though my account wasn't linked to my number, and starts messaging me, to which I once again respond, this is his last warning, and that he better leave me alone or I'll report him, to which he told me I won't be a minor forever, and I blocked him. So, to the police officer, who used his authority to make me uncomfortable, and give him my phone number, please do not reach out to me again. I look back now and cringe at the fact that I was so stupid and thought that he could have gotten away with arresting me for loitering. But yeah, it was definitely very uncomfortable. Back when I was 19 and in college in Las Vegas, I received a call from my now ex's sister. She had gone out the night before and gotten a little bit drunk, and was attacked and raped by three guys, then ended up in the drunk tank. This bit is important since she asked me to pick her up where the police were dropping her off. Where the police were dropping her off was the worst area in Las Vegas at the time, basically where the illegal street walkers and drug deals go down. Fairly certain the police just thought she was a prostitute who had a bad night but didn't have anything to book her on other than drunken and disorderly. And no, she wasn't nor ever was a prostitute. I drove to this area and found a place to park. I had never been in this area before and had to get out to try to find where she was going to be dropped off. The hair on the back of my neck started standing as end as I could see the cross section she had referenced ahead of me. I don't see her or the cops yet. To my right was a fairly dark alley, which is rare in Las Vegas due to, you know, it being in the middle of the desert and most of the buildings are spread out. Out of this alley, I hear a man start pleading for help. This is where the absolute dread feeling in the pit of my stomach just turned to full on nope. I turned around to get my car and drive to where I needed to be. As I began to walk away, the same voice from the alley started cussing me out. And while it had been over 15 years, I still remember the venom dripping from the voice as he said, Fine, you're not worth fucking anyways. As I drive back, I see my ex-sister huddled on the curb next to a cop car. The cops leave without a word to me. She's in pretty bad wants to get home. She's violently ill in my car, but thankfully I had a plastic tub she was able to use for the vomit. She refused to go to the hospital. She did get tested for STDs later. I left her in the care of her mom and brother. For this one, to the creep in the alley and the cops that really did a shit job that day, let's never meet. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and hit the bell for notifications on future videos and become a stalker of the night, and I'll see you next time.